Now, there's a quote, there is no such thing as a way. When you throw something away, it must end up somewhere. And this is from Annie Leonard. And these words form part of this company's core beliefs. And these are the core beliefs of Sial Environmental Services Limited. We're very happy to be joined by the CEO and the chief consultant in Sial in the form of Shan Coffey Young. Hello, ma'am. How are you? Good afternoon, sir. I am well, thank you. Now, I want to dive into this, right? Because you said at the start of the pandemic, when everyone started gardening and making doubles and all of these things, you saw a bump in your workload. So what does it, what, has that tailored off? Has it plateaued? Was it, what does it look like now? Um, I would say that it has settled off a bit now. Um, I have gotten into a groove per se. So now I have been able to create so many more um, programs and resources, one of which we're going to be talking about. So I don't want to preempt the conversation by, you know, divulging too much too soon. Thank you very much. Now, in terms of some of those programs, though, if we start off saying your goal, Sile's goal is to be, how would you complete that sentence or statement? So Sile's goal is to be the top waste education company in the Caribbean region. So that's the goal. And the mission is to transform the way you think and act towards waste. So those are the two things that I have. You know, I have my blinders on and I'm definitely working towards those two things. And we congratulate you on that because it's, it's, over, it's over a decade and at least a decade and a half that you've been in, in, the, in this kind of job spec and grinding. But I want yes. to ask you though, because I see some things on your on your social pages that I'm very appreciative for to ask you about. Throw sure. your waste in the right place. What's, yes. what's the thrust behind that initiative? Well, first of all, that is my favorite Calypso by Lord Funny. Um, it was done probably before I was even born, but I loved it so much. I said, you know, I have to find a way to use the words um, in following or in completing the mission, right? So what I have been able to do is to compile a document because people tend to ask me all the time, you know, Sean, where do, where do I take my laptop? Or who takes batteries? You know, I get those questions very, very often. So I decided, you know what? Let me be proactive. Let me compile a list of the, recycle, the recyclers or collectors that I know of um, and share that list openly with people. So no matter when you think of your home and you think of what you want to throw away, there is something or someone in that list that can um, take it from you and, and, and deal with it in an environmentally sound manner. So that is where the, um, the whole thrust came from. I just wanted to kind of collate everything in one space. So the eye care program is there, Carib Glassworks is there. A couple of my other colleagues who do e-waste, they are piranha and recyclage, they're also there. So um, it was just, you know, to, because people looking for information all over the place. So I just think, you know, let me just put everything in one place. And my goal, of course, is to also transition that, use tech and transition that into an online database. Because that so would, that's where it all came from. That would have been my next question, apart from sidetracking myself a little bit, because when you say when a Calypson, a Calypsonian talk about throwing waste, <laughs> I went down a different road for a little bit, right, but I'm back. Right, right. I'm back with you. Yes. So in terms of so when do you plan to make that uh, available? Because I can see it as a wonderful resource for one, people just wanting to know where to put their waste, two right. people trying to get themselves added to that directory. Right. So right now it is out. It is on my Facebook page, Sile Environmental Services Limited, or you could just type in S-I-E-L-T-T. -T. It's pinned to the top of the page. So once you go there, um, and I also have a link to it um, on my Instagram and on my LinkedIn profile as well. So I have shared it. Um, and as I said, my next step is to create it into an online searchable database. Uh, so I'm having conversations with some of my colleagues in the field to kind of make that happen um, in the first quarter of next year. 
So those are the places where people can go and find it. And if anyone would like to be added to the directory, as you've mentioned, feel free to reach out to me as well, and I'll just add you to the directory. And before we go any further, let's get that contact information so we have those two ideas next to each other. How do people contact you? I know you said S-I-L-T-T, that's S-I-E-L-T-T. -T. Yes. Well, how on S-I-E-L-T-T -T on Facebook and Instagram, you can connect with me personally, Shan Cuffey Young, that's S-I-A-N, Cuffey with a Y hyphen Young on LinkedIn um, as well. And the company page, Sile Environmental, is also on LinkedIn. And I also have my email addresses there and a phone number. So all of that, once you go to the page, you'll definitely be able to reach me in some way or another. So I wanted to wait until the second half of this conversation, but the last time we spoke, we wanted to speak about this. So, yes. KY's Adventures, or, uh, or is it Kai's Adventures? Kai's take, Medical take me through from Adventures. the name, concept, process. Right. So, Kai is, so let's start at the beginning. So, Kai is short for my, it's my daughter's nickname. Her name is Kaya. And since I have started introducing them both to my daughter and my son, all three of them, and my eldest boy as well, she really took on this recycling guru responsibility, you know, in the house. And I've always wanted to create something for her, patterning after her interaction with waste and recycling and the environment, how she asks questions. She's very, very curious. Um, and she also feels really strongly about when she sees people doing things they're not that she knows that they're not supposed to do. So when she sees people littering or if she sees people putting things in the wrong recycling bin, she gets very, very agitated, you know? So I wanted to capture her journey in a book. Um, I also wanted her to be able to see herself through the story um, because she's part of my focus group. So when the illustrations are being done, I was like, do you like this? Do you not like this? Um, because it is targeted for her and uh, her age group because it's for seven to 10 years old. Um, how it all started, it started 14 years ago, all the way back to when I first started working at Swim Call. There too is where I found my love of waste education. And I would do a number of lectures and I always felt like I wanted to leave something tangible behind for these little people. So I would go repeatedly school after school, camp after camp, um, but I still wanted the story to continue even after I've gone. So with that now came the thought of the book. I created one at that time it was more of an activity book than a story book like it is now. But it didn't, it didn't, unfortunately, it didn't get to see the light of day. So fast forward 14 years, after same thing, doing a number of presentations, feeling very much the same way. I was like, you know what, Shan, it is in your power, it is within your control to get it done. Just let us get it done. So I sat one night. It took me about an hour. I wrote the story. It has since evolved um, because, you know, with the editing process, things change. You want to add things. Um, I did not know that the process would be like this. I really, I don't know, maybe I somehow thought that it was going to be a lot simpler. <laughs> but, you know, when you're in it is when you realize how how many different moving parts there comes to or, or there is when there's when you have to write a book and a children's book is very different from an adult book so i've been learning all of those lessons um but extremely extremely excited that it is finally coming to life um and that i'm going to be able to share it with you know the nation's children and so on to continue the story because the book is part of a larger waste education and literacy program and i want to be able to start teaching them from a very very young age how they should view waste how they should handle it what they should do with it at the end of its life so therefore as they grow they already have these values within them and we will have very much less work to do because they are already cemented in their thoughts um, you know, if they go to a school and the school has no recycling, they should be asking them, you know, what is going on here? This is, this is strange. I want it to become the norm, the, what they should be doing every single day of the week. So 
that's where it all started. Um, that's what it has become. Now I have to uh, fine tune the literacy program to incorporate some of the virtual activities. Because and in terms of some of those virtual program. activities, I think we'll speak about them on the other side. But stay with us. We're speaking with Shan Coffey Young. You do not want to miss anything. Stay with us. Welcome back. We are speaking with Shan Coffey Young, CEO and Principal Consultant of Sile Environmental Services Limited. And Shan, one, you raised a great deal of issues that I want to ask you about a little more. So you spoke about wanting to leave something for Kai and generations coming. Uh, that also brings up the topic of having people see themselves. Because sometimes people see somebody else doing something, and but they don't necessarily see themselves represented. And Correct. I also want to know how important is that narrative for you? So as opposed to saying another child might ask Kai what, she, what her mother does. No, mm -hmm. somebody might say, well, Kai, your mommy does play up in garbage. But Kai <laughs> will, might turn and say, no, my mommy deals with waste and dealing with it properly. And yes. how important is that narrative for you so that people say, okay, well, we can talk about this in this manner as opposed to just colloquially or by the way? That narrative is extremely important to me. Um, normally, when people ask her what her mommy does, she says, my mommy does things with recycling. That's where she is. She's seven, I forgive her. So, but her being able to see herself represented because um, the book is also going to be in an audio version. So I am also going to be uh, using our dialect because now, especially as our children are in homeschool, you know, they hear a lot of American accents and British accents, but they don't hear ours. So the book eventually will also transition into an animated series, which is, I can't tell you, that is making my paws raise. It's so exciting. But the narrative of her understanding and other children understanding that we have to, one, you have to see yourself doing this kind of work. It is not just for Kaya's mommy or anybody else, but it's you, it is your responsibility. Because one of the things in the book is that I want to awaken the eco hero within them. So they understand that somebody else doesn't have to come from a faraway land to teach you how you should be managing your waste, the fact that your garbage should be going in a bin, because you already have the power within you to make a difference, to teach others. And you know, at that age, she loves responsibility. So I am, the goal of the series, because this is just book one in a series, is to really awaken the eco hero within our children. So the narrative is really, really important and that it flows across all of the books in the series um, so that the children understand and see themselves and see the power that they have to make better decisions. Now, you spoke about your pause raising. Somebody who's looking at this, listening to this, and their pause are raising as well. How do they get on to this in terms of pre-ordering? How, how do you fund this? Is this something that you need help with? How can people assist in that way in terms of accessing and assisting? Yes, great question. Glad you asked it. Your girl needs some help. <laughs> so so um, I have started a crowdfunding page because I consider myself to be a leader and social entrepreneur in the waste space. And as such, I have very big goals, very big dreams, large vision, but I can't do it alone. So I did create a crowdfunding page for those of you who may be listening and want to support us and support this journey that we are on. We welcome it. I'm also accepting pre-orders for the book right now. Um, so if you go on our uh, Facebook and Instagram pages, there is a link there that you can simply click on to place a pre-order. And of course, you follow the guided instructions. You can pay for the book one time if you want to do so. That is preferred. Um, but those those two are the, are the main ways because I see this as something bigger than me. It is a long-term goal that I have, so it's not just going to stop next year or the year after that. This is a full-fledged program that we are creating, developing, tweaking, 
So we need people to come on board with us um, and to help us along the way, either through the crowdfunding page or through um, the pre-order page. There is no minimum that you can donate. Um, the cost of the book is 110 TT dollars or 15.99 US dollars um, so that you can go ahead and pre-order the book. But those are the two main ways right now. Now, but you spoke about people coming on board. I am glad that I did not do your illustrations because it would have been pure stick people. So who are some of the people who were involved in getting, getting the book to where it is at this point? So I've had a few people, and I've gone a bit unconventional. So I'll start with those who helped me from the very, very start. So I've had Smirk Studio, who did my first set of illustrations. Um, I've actually used an online marketplace called Fiverr for the balance of my illustrations, my virtual book launch. I have partnered with Mario's Pizza, with TCJ Events, with Pros and Coms, um, My Beach, My Water, Eco-Minded Supplies, because we have lots of giveaways as well for the virtual book launch. It's going to be super fun. Um, we have Sonny Bling, who has offered his services as a host. And then we have my one of my favorite uncles, not real, but Uncle Errol Fabian, who has offered to come to read the book live on the day of the book launch. So we have had some super fantastic um, partners. Yes, that's my word. Uh, but the, of course, there's room for more. So if you have, if you have an eco-friendly product that you would like to um, give as a donation or sponsor it as a prize, because we have lots of awesome giveaways, feel free to reach out to me and we can make that happen. Um, or if you want to financially sponsor or if your business can help us with some printing, all of those things we are gladly accepting at this point in time. So um, connect with me and we could continue the conversation. No, but in terms of that conversation, you spoke about the launch. You didn't say when the launch is. Oh gosh, how could I forget that? I don't Sunday, know. Sunday, December 6th. That is the date of the launch. It will be virtual time, 3 p.m. If anything changes, you have to stay tuned to my social media because that's where I'm sharing everything. Um, and email those of you whose email addresses that I have from the pre-order. I'm going to be sharing it there as well. But Sunday, December 6th, first Sunday in December, that is the date. 3 p.m. is the time. You have to be there. It is going to be awesome. Super fantastic is the word that you say, coining. And, we, and I'll, I'll, I'll give you credit with it, hat tip. But um, thank you, Shan, for the work that you're doing. Because I think too many people still are disappointed when they look in the mirror and they see what they see as opposed to something else or another trope or another thing that people see would be the the look or the epitome of beauty or people who get things done superheroes from a far off land and we want to thank you for taking time to give a little insight into the book how people can be a part and a partner with you and we want to thank you on behalf of the entire news team for joining us this evening i'm dk roster have a good night